You ever uh, been the only guy on your team to play guitar one Sunday and you're listening to a track that has like four guitar parts or maybe uh, you're playing with multi-tracks and you don't really know which one you're supposed to cover? Well, hopefully this video will help you out. So let's get into it. So one of the things that's, for better or for worse, helpful about um, worship music that's currently coming out is the structure and the way in which guitar parts are created are pretty similar across the platform. Um, what I mean by that is you typically have about four guitar parts that are recorded on a track and two of those are probably some sort of hook um, by two sort of lead players so one might be doing slide the other might be doing an actual part and then you typically have a third part that's just ambient uh, just kind of washed out it's almost like a pad um, and then finally you have probably a rhythm guitar or maybe even five guitar parts like you have a rhythm guitar that's doing bar chords and then you have somebody who's capoed just you know creating some some texture and some different sounds uh, it varies song to song, but that's pretty much what's happening now. Uh, I'm not knocking it, I, I think it sounds awesome. But what that does is it helps us to figure out when we start listening to like, let's say a multi-track, which I think is the easiest way to do this, is just look at the multi-track. Um, and if you don't have access to multi-tracks, I would encourage you to, I think you can pay, I don't actually know. I think you can pay uh, like a amount of money a month, I'm not sure what that is, to be able to like, um, practice with the multi-track so instead of downloading them let's say your church doesn't use them I think you can pay to just listen to them uh, all the way through and then you can isolate the guitar parts um, or various instruments whatever your instrument might be um, so that would be a really useful helpful investment for you especially if the cost isn't too high like I don't, I don't know let's say it's ten dollars a month um, that's worth it if you're playing week in and week out at your church and just as an investment into you uh, and so you can enjoy the morning more by really knowing your stuff but anyways let me get back to this so you um as we're gonna flip over to the multi-track here in a second and um as we're listening to it i'm just gonna sort of quickly explain to you my thought process when it comes to picking out the various parts and quickly going through a song so let's get into that all right guys so um, I'm gonna try to keep this conversation short because there's not gonna be any playing in this video so if you're not like into this kind of conversational piece probably want to skip this um, but if you like learning this might be fun um, so I just I have the multi tracks pulled up here and I was gonna do some screen sharing and stuff but the reality is you don't really need to see this as much as you need to understand it um, so the first thing that I do when I'm trying to figure out what part to cover in a song is I have to find out do I have a second guitar player or is it just me? If it's just me, that's going to change the way that I decide which parts to play. Okay, so for example, the thing that I'm looking for in any song when it comes to a guitar lead line is which line holds strongest to the melody. In other words, which line supports the melody the best, which line feels like it's taking up the most amount of space while still maintaining some energy and some clarity. So not just like pounding rhythm chords, um, but which part, which part can stand alone on its own. Um, so to kind of give you uh, an example of that, I'm going to play this song. Uh, this is Living Hope, uh, which is the new Phil Wickham song. It's super awesome. 
We're doing it Sunday. This is in the key of B. I've got multi tracks into GarageBand. I'm assuming most of you have GarageBand. Um, so you can do this as well if you're interested. This is a great way to learn is just dump all the tracks in and then start isolating them. So I'm going to kind of come in here. I think the song comes in close to the first chorus. It sneaks in. So this is first chorus. Interlude. Okay, um, so here we have this kind of slide part at the beginning of the song. Um, and what I'm going to do, EG1 oftentimes is the lead line, which I was talking about before uh, with the structure of songs. But um, let's, let's just fast forward and I just want to hear what's going on here. Right, so, so we have a really nice, um, like, uh, hook thing going on here. It's not really a specific one-line hook or uh, one-section hook, but it's kind of all throughout the song. He's just kind of vamping through a few different things. So let's go to EG2. Let's hear what's going on here. Chorus. Okay, so not too bad, a little alternate sort of um, lead line. Um, it's, it's definitely more of a textured piece in my opinion. It's not really the focal point. Uh, let's look at EG3 just to make sure. Okay, same thing. Um, and then finally, let's look at EG4. Bridge. Okay. So this is just a rhythm. This is just a rhythm channel. Um, okay, so we don't want to cover EG4, right? Because it can't... Well, EG4 would be fine if you really, really don't feel comfortable playing the slide stuff which uh, as I uh, have worked through this song a little bit, not a lot, it, it, playing slide's not easy. Uh, to do it well, it's not easy, uh, especially if you don't have a guitar set up for it. Uh, but anyways, let's look at which one of these songs, I'm just gonna go to a big chorus, and which one of these songs can stand on its own? Oh, I'm sorry, which one of these parts can stand on its own? Let me, let's Um, go ahead here. Ah. Yeah. Let's figure out where I'm at here. Okay. Yeah. Chorus. Okay, so that part's definitely strong. Um, let's look at let's look at EG uh, two. Let's see what we can do here. Okay, so that part's good too. I, I wouldn't say it's as strong. Let's look at EG three. Come back here. All right, 
same thing. Finally, EG4. Not even here for this part of the song. So I think it's pretty obvious that EG1 is the strongest part to play in this song. But the thing you want to keep in mind is this may not be the case for the entire song. Um, so let's just fast forward here towards the end of the song. Okay, so that part, in my opinion, at the end, that part becomes weak because the band's rocking, uh, drums are in pretty big, all that kind of stuff. So you would probably want to change what part you're playing, and that's probably what I'll do as well. Sorry guys, my camera died on me. Uh, I'm shooting so much that I keep forgetting to recharge my extra batteries here at the office. Uh, but anyways, let's get back into this video. So yeah, that's, that part towards the end of the song actually becomes a little less strong to me. And I would probably do something different. Um, and let me just grab a guitar maybe to show you. Mm. <sighs> Good? Yeah? Cool, cool. Um, so, good, it's in tune. Um, so, at the end of that song, if you're just the only player in the band, it might be a good idea to just do something really simple but full. Um, you know, you could do some triad stuff. Um, so, like, on that last course, maybe it makes sense to do... Um, You get the idea. Um, with some delay and verb on, just something very basic like that can fill a lot of space and it's in an octave uh, in a frequency range that's not intruding on other instruments. Just food for thought. Um, so yeah, remember guys, use your ears. Remember that melody is the most important part of the song, so it's important that you pick the parts that support the melody the best. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for your subscri or subscriptions. Uh, I'm totally like skipping every little milestone. We're now over 300 subscribers. So thank you guys so much. It's very humbling. Um, and I hope that you continue to feel like I'm supporting you. If you have an idea for videos, um, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. Give me a thumbs up, shoot me a message on Slack. All that stuff would be great. We'll see you guys next week.